Nelson Mandela's face is one of the most recognizable in the world. And tonight in South Africa, this symbol of racial equality died at the age of 95. From boxer to advocate, prisoner to peace prize winner, it seemed Mandela was always fighting for a cause greater than himself. As reactions pour in from around the globe, it's clear that his legacy as a champion of human rights, equality and freedom will be forever etched in our minds and in history. From world leaders like President Obama. Like so many around the globe, I cannot fully imagine my own life without the example that Nelson Mandela set. And so long uh, as I live, I will do what I can to learn from him. To celebrities and mostly ordinary citizens of the world, an outpouring of love and mourning. ABC's Alex Marquardt is live for us in Johannesburg. Alex. Good evening, Dan. A new day has dawned here in South Africa. There is a profound sense of loss and mourning that has swept the entire country. What's really remarkable are celebrations like this one right outside Mandela's home that we've seen spring up around the country. South Africans marking the passing of this great man by celebrating his life. When the news broke tonight of Mandela's death, South Africans of all stripes flocked to Mandela's home. Young, old, white, and black. They danced. They sang old songs of struggle from the apartheid era. It's, it's tragic, it's sad, but at the same time, I think we should celebrate, celebrate what he has achieved and what he has given us. We wouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't be free. Let's just say if it wasn't for him. But some who showed up to pay their respects were overcome with grief. I'm disappointed, I'm sad, but at the same time, I think he's, he's had his part in life and he did it very well. These scenes swept across the country, growing into the wee hours of the morning after President Jacob Zuma broke the news to the nation and to the world. He is now at peace. Our nation has lost its greatest son. Our people have lost a father. Tributes to the man affectionately known as Tata Madiba immediately poured in, including from F.W. de Klerk, the last president of white supremacist South Africa, who said, your spirit and example will always be there to guide us to the vision of a better and more just South Africa. Now 10 days of national mourning will start, during which Mandela will lie in state in the capital, Pretoria, so that South Africans can say their final goodbyes before he's carried back to his ancestral village of Kunu for burial. Dan? Thanks, Alex. When Nelson Mandela walked out of prison in 1990, after nearly 30 years, it represented much more than just his personal freedom. It meant that he and all of those who had fought so hard for him and his cause had finally won a major battle. But the broader fight was far from over. Nightline's founding anchor Ted Koppel was there to speak with him soon after he was released. This is ABC News Nightline. Reporting from South Africa, Ted Koppel. Tonight, we have only one guest, Nelson Mandela. Most people would look at the last 27 years of your life and say to themselves, what a waste. What about you? That is true. <clears throat> to spend uh, 27 years at the prime of your life is a tragedy. And uh, I regret, you know, those years that I have wasted in prison. But uh, there are very positive aspects too, because I had the opportunity to think about problems and to reflect on my mistakes. Amazing. And over the years, Mandela's special history with Nightline continued. Here's ABC's chief foreign correspondent, Terry Moran, on the man who helped change so much. There's Mr. Mandela, Mr. Nelson Mandela, a free man taking his first steps into a new South Africa. It was a long walk Nelson Mandela took, a walk that lasted nearly a century, a walk to freedom and human dignity, a walk he ended up taking the whole world on along with him. On behalf of our rainbow nation, I welcome you all. Nelson Mandela towered over his time. 
a moral and political leader of surpassing strength, implacable determination, and profound decency. I am the product of Africa and her long and cherished dream of a rebirth that can now be realized so that all of her children may play in the sun. Mandela was born in 1918 into the royal family of the Tembu people, but he grew up under apartheid, the vicious system of racial segregation and oppression by which the white minority ruled South Africa. It's hard today to imagine the pure evil of that system, abject poverty for blacks and severe restrictions on travel, education, and employment. Whites enjoyed all the power and riches in this rich country. Mandela's tribal name, Holithatha, meant troublemaker, so perhaps it was his destiny. Because he quickly rose to prominence as a lawyer founding the country's first black law firm and leading agitator for change. Especially after the terrible Sharpeville massacre in 1960, when he and the African National Congress took up armed struggle. There are many people who feel that it is useless and futile for us to continue talking peace and nonviolence against a government whose reply is only savage attacks on an unarmed and defenseless people. Mandela was a born leader, and so in 1964, the apartheid government tried him for treason and sought the death penalty. His opening statement to the court electrified the country. I have cherished the idea of a democratic and free society. It is an idea for which I hope to live for and to see realized. But my Lord, if it needs be, it is an idea for which I am prepared to die. Mandela was sentenced to life imprisonment and sent to the notorious Robben Island prison. And he was not heard from for nearly 30 years. He was just prisoner number 46664. The years passed in prison. Mandela became a myth, a global symbol for the fight against apartheid. Hey, and then in 1990, the South African government, under increasing pressure and isolated in the world, suddenly yielded. Mr. Nelson Mandela will be released at the Victor Verstaat prison. It was an amazing moment when Mandela walked out of prison Today, on February 11th, 1990, the world rejoiced. <laughs> After his release, there was, miraculously it seemed, no trace of bitterness for what he'd endured. But his resolve was unbroken. Today, the majority of South Africans, black and white, recognize that apartheid has no future. He worked with his former enemy, Prime Minister F.W. de Klerk, to move toward free elections and the end of apartheid. He and de Klerk were jointly awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1993, and then the following year, this. The world again looked on in wonder and joy as millions of black South Africans lined up to vote for the first time. Nelson Mandela was elected president in a landslide. So help me God. A few months later at his inauguration, attended by scores of world leaders, he declared a new era for his beloved country. Never again shall it be that this beautiful land will again experience the oppression of one by another. Mandela served only one five-year term, handing the reins to his vice president, Thabo Mbeki. The years had taken their toll. Mandela and his wife, Winnie, divorced in 1996 after a four-year separation. After leaving office, Mandela took on the role of elder world statesman, fighting injustice, not only in South Africa, but also in the rest of the world. He married his third wife and longtime companion, Grasa Michelle, on his 80th birthday, and content at last, made an effort to retreat from public life. Don't call me. <laughs> I'll call you. His public appearances became increasingly rare, each one of them a reason to celebrate. He was all smiles when his great-grandchildren sang to him on his 92nd birthday. Happy birthday to you. When he closed his eyes for the last time, Nelson Mandela was surrounded by his family and by the affection and admiration of the world. He had truly fought the good fight, walked that long walk, 
a journey unfinished towards justice, peace, and love. And on that journey, which is after all the course of human history, we all follow in Nelson Mandela's footsteps.